Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Rolex Submariner reference 124060. This watch is available from Chronex.com for €12,990. You can purchase the watch from Chronex.com online or alternatively in person at their boutiques. All their watches are Chronex certified original by their in-house watchmakers and all their watches are covered by the Chronex 24 month warranty. So firstly let's look at the box that the watch comes in and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets for the piece. So the Submariner comes in this familiar cardboard outer watch box and as you can see on the lid we have the embossed Rolex coronet which is very aesthetically pleasing. One removes the lid, pulls down the flap and inside I will show you the watch box itself. So the watch box is finished to a high standard and I like the gold coronet which is embossed on the hinged lid. Inside the lid there is a panel one pulls down the panel and that houses two items which I'll show you. We have a leather wallet which contains the guarantee manual worldwide service booklet and on the reverse we have the new style electronic warranty card. This is a brand new unworn 2021 piece and as you can see the date of purchase was the 24th of June 2021. One also gets this Oyster Perpetual Submariner and Submariner Date Owner's Instruction Manual which is a very useful read. And lastly, one also gets this plastic tag. On one side, as you can see, it says Rolex SA Geneva. And on the reverse, we have Superlative Certified with the Rolex hologram. So this hologram tag certifies that the movement used in the piece, which is the Calibre 3230, is certified both by COSC and also Rolex themselves as a superlative chronometer. So, with regards to the specification of the piece, this is the Rolex Submariner 124060. It succeeds its previous model, the 114060, and it has some notable enhancements which I'll detail. 41mm case diameter, it has a 48mm lug to lug measurement, a thickness of 12.4mm, and a lug width of 20mm. The Oyster bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to the glide lock clasp and as you can see the flip lock on the glide lock clasp is signed with the Rolex coronet. Now as this is a brand new unworn 2021 piece it's still covered by the protective films on the glide lock on the exterior and the interior but I can confirm that the quality of the finishing to the 9040 Oyster steel on the glide lock is sublime as one would expect. So with regards to the dimensions there are some notable changes of the 124060 to its predecessor the 114060. 41mm case diameter, the previous version was 40mm. Another notable change is the lug width, on the previous version it was 20mm but Rolex has scaled it up to 21mm. I think they've made the correct decision by increasing the proportions of the case to 41mm and 21mm lug width respectively. Another change is they have reduced the thickness of the lugs. The 114060 supercase had thick square block like lugs, but with the 124060 we're looking at here, they have slimmed down the lugs, they have more of a taper to the 21mm wide bracelet. So the bracelet better balances the head of the piece, the 41mm head of the piece is perfectly balanced by the 21mm bracelet. Also there is a, a better taper from 21mm at the lugs down to the wider glide lock clasp. The wider glide lock clasp does balance the head of the piece better and also it suits the wider taper of the bracelet better so really I think Rolex deserve full credit because they have refined the 114060 in this 124060 it looks better with these slimmer lugs and the wider bracelet. With regards to the rest of the specification another notable upgrade is the inclusion of clear AR coating on the underside of the sapphire crystal. The 114060 did not have AR coating and the applied white gold indices and, and white gold Mercedes hands are very glossy and highly reflective so there was a lot of glare from the dial and the applied indices but they have corrected this by using AR coating on the underside of the flat sapphire crystal and as you can see the AR coating on the 124060 is superior. It does enhance it, it reduces the glare and the highly reflective nature of the flat sapphire crystal. Now with regards to the dial layout, it is the classic maxi dial layout. The Submariner is 
sought after by purist Rolex collectors because the first Rolex Submariner, the 6204 from 1953, did not have a date complication. And the purist Rolex, collector, purist Rolex collectors have always favoured the Submariner over the Submariner date as a result because it has that lineage, it has that purity of design from the original 6004 from 1953. They prefer it without the date complication and the Cyclops magnifier unbalancing the symmetry of the dial because the original Submariner dial layout was without date complication. I absolutely love the symmetry, the functionality and the clarity of the dial, it really is perfection of design. With regards to the bezel, I'll explain how Rolex make the serochrome bezel. They heat up the serochrome to the very high melting point of 1600 degrees Celsius and then they sinter platinum into the minute ticks and the Arabic numerals. And really this is an example of the very best ceramic bezel insert in the world. Serochrome in inlaid with sintered platinum is just absolutely gorgeous to look at. So let's test the bezel action. 120 click unidirectional bezel as one would expect. No lateral side to side play whatsoever. No back play whatsoever. It is perfection. Needless to say, the resistance of the 120 clicks all the way through the 360 degrees of rotation feel consistent. Nice crisp clicks. Good firm resistance. Nice loud audible clicks. And needless to say, the alignment is perfect. So the loom pip and triangle align correctly with the 12 o'clock index on the dial, which is the triangle shape. So it's just the perfect example of a bezel action, and really no one does it better than Rolex. With regards to the crown, it's coin edge finished, solid oyster steel. It's embossed with the Rolex coronet and has three dots underneath the coronet, which denotes it's a trip block crown. So let's test the action absolutely silky smooth it's the perfect crown action i really like rolex twin lock and trip lock crowns they really are the very best in the world in the first position it's the manual wind position and one can manually wind the caliber 3230 to top it up to its maximum 70 hour power reserve pulling it out to the final click position because there's no date complication is the time setting position now as i've discussed in my previous review which was the yacht master 40 review it's a curiosity of the calibre 3230 and also the calibre 3235 used in the Yachtmaster that rotating the crown turns the hands in the opposite direction to the way one would expect. So for example, when I rotate the crown clockwise, it rotates the hands anti-clockwise. When I rotate the crown anti-clockwise, it rotates the hands clockwise, converse to the way that one would expect. So it does take some getting used to. And the other characteristic of the calibre 3230 is it has a firmer resistance. One can feel the gears in the movement when setting the time. With the Calibre 3130, the predecessor, it was lighter action, it was smoother in terms of resistance, but I actually like the solid feel of the Calibre 3230. It's an absolute pleasure to set the time. It has hacking, as you can see, I have now hacked the movement, and that has stopped the hand set, uh, dead, so one can set the time precisely to the second. Pressing in the crown has a good positive click and that restarts the movement. So I'll just screw it back down and test the interface between the threads. Absolute perfection, instant pickup between the internal thread of the oyster steel crown and the external thread of the crown tube. It really is sublime. It's one of the pleasures of a Rolex Submariner, the, tri the trip lock crown, being able to screw it down immediately. So I absolutely love the crown. With regards to the case back, it's the usual Rolex Submariner case back, oyster steel, brass satin finish to the centre section, longitudinally, mirror polish to the circumference and coin edge finished. Although undecorated, it does provide an effective hermetic seal to 300 metres and it is very flat and smooth and therefore comfortable on the wrist. The solid end links are an excellent fit to the case, brass satin finish to the underside of the case, flawless finishing throughout as one would expect. So, I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now, I haven't sized the bracelet, I've simply taken the piece out of the watch box, but I have extended the glide lock to its maximum extension. And I'm pleased to report that it fits my 8 inch wrist to perfection, as you can see. Good positive click to the glide lock, and I really like it, although it's covered in protective film. It, the 9040 Oyster still does have a beautiful luster to it. I absolutely love the luster to the Oyster bracelet, as you can see, it's an absolute delight to look at the 9040 Oyster still in the light. So, with regards to proportions, 
As you'll know from my previous reviews, I consider 48mm to be perfection. It is the sweet spot regardless of whether you're a collector with a 6 to 7 inch wrist or 7 to 8 inches respectively. 48mm fits all wrist sizes and I'm pleased to report that this Sabarina 124060 has a precisely 48mm lug to lug measurement. They have got the length of the case perfect. As I've discussed, they have made the correct decision by slimming down the lugs of the super case used in the 114060 and also increasing the lug width from 20mm to 21 41mm head of the piece perfectly balances the 21mm lug width. It's just the perfect Rolex Submariner personified and this is definitely an improvement on its predecessor, the 114060, which is a piece I've personally owned. Absolutely beautiful to look at on wrist, incredibly comfortable to wear for long periods of time, and it's only 12.4mm thick, no Cyclops magnifier on the flat sapphire crystal, so it's easily going to slip underneath a shirt cuff. Just absolutely beautiful to look at the flat sapphire crystal. Now it does benefit from AR coating on the underside of the sapphire crystal, and as you can see, that does reduce the glare and the highly reflective nature of the white gold applied indices and Mercedes hands, as I've discussed. So this is the perfect Rolex Submariner, it cannot be improved upon. Proportions are correct, symmetry is perfection, and also the taper of the 21mm bracelet is also perfection. Everything about it is just sublime. Very aesthetically pleasing piece, very comfortable piece to wear. Now with regards to the heft, it's 159 grams, and as you know from my previous reviews, I consider 150 grams to be the sweet spot uh, with regards to heft. It gives a nice feeling of wrist presence on wrist, but also it's comfortable to wear for long periods of time such as 8 to 12 hours per day because it is close to circa 150 grams. 159 grams really is the perfect weight for a 41 millimeter piece. So let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to its absolute maximum. So as always I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to its absolute peak. Right so that's now fully charged and as you can see it has not disappointed. This is perfection. This is the very best loom in the world, Rolex Chromalite. It cannot be beaten. It's superior to Seiko Lumabrite and it is also very close in performance to Swiss BGW9 Superluminova. It has a very similar blue tone. It's better than Tritium and it's also better than Superluminova. Really nothing comes close to Chromalite in terms of its brightness and also the length of time the Chromalite glows for. The maxi dial is clearly legible and of course because it doesn't have a date complication as per the Submariner date, the symmetry of the dial is perfect. The 9, 6 and 3 o'clock indices on the dial are clearly legible as is the 12 o'clock index on the dial with the triangle. The orientation is outstanding and it's just the perfect dial. Now, with regards to the movement, it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece, the calibre 3230, which succeeds uh, the calibre 3130. So it's a technically excellent movement, 31 joules, it has 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz, and as you'll know from my previous reviews, I consider 4 hertz to be the perfect compromise between power reserve and accuracy, it is the sweet spot. Another thing I personally like about 4 hertz movements, if you look closely at the second hand, the 4 hertz gives a beautiful smooth sweep to the second hand. It doesn't stutter or judder around the dial like a 3 hertz movement running at 21,600 vibrations per hour. So it is perfection. It is the perfect balance, 28,800 vibrations per hour and 4 hertz. 70 hour power reserve is very impressive. Its predecessor, the Calibre 3130, only had a 48 hour power reserve. So this movement has a more efficient chronology and the chronology is responsible for increasing the power reserve from 48 hours in the 3130 to 70 hours in this calibre 3230. So that is an impressive gain in power reserve. Now normally when a watchmaker increases the power reserve in the, there is a negative trade-off to that. It normally uh, decreases the accuracy. If one gains in power reserve one inevitably loses accuracy. But however, this is cost chronometer certified and it's also certified by Rolex after casing to a stated accuracy of minus two to plus two seconds per day, so cost chronometer limits. This one is running consistently at minus one second per day when fully wound to its maximum 70 hour power reserve. So they haven't sacrificed any accuracy in the caliber 3230 when they increased the power reserve from 48 hours to 70. 
and that is usually the, the negative trade-off. So incredibly accurate movements, incredibly reliable. Another enhancement is the use of high performance lubricants. The Calibre 3130 had a five year service interval. This Calibre 3230 has a 10 year service interval because it uses the high performance lubricants. So I want you to consider that. So you can purchase this piece, which is a brand new 2021 piece, Wear the watch for 10 years before it needs a service at Rolex Service Centre, so that is very impressive, extending the service interval from 5 years to 10 years respectively. So there are no negatives whatsoever to the Calibre 3230. It uses paramagnetic, parachrome blue hairspring, which is, means that it's highly anti-magnetic. It's also highly shock resistant because it uses paraflex shock absorbers. So accurate, the build quality is outstanding, the reliability is outstanding and also the build quality is outstanding. Everything about it is perfection. The Calibre 3230 is one of my personal favorite Rolex movements, and it's one of the reasons I personally purchased my Rolex Oyster Perpetual 41, because it also uses the Calibre 3230. So lastly, I'll summarize the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch meets two criteria. It should be both excellent quality, and excellent value at the respective price point. So €12,990 is significantly above retail. That is fully justified because the Submariner is an incredibly difficult piece to purchase from Rolex authorised dealers. It is a purist Rolex collector's piece, it is highly in demand and therefore supply is scarce. So the scarcity of the piece, the difficulty in obtaining it from Rolex authorised dealers therefore justifies the premium over retail, 12,990 euro. This is unusual in that it is a watch without any negatives whatsoever. It is perfection. I was critical of the 114060 and I have also reviewed the Submariner date version uh, and I was critical of that, but I cannot find any negatives with this 124060 whatsoever. It is the perfect Rolex Submariner. It cannot be improved upon. The 41mm case, the 21mm lug width, the slimmer lugs, everything about it is correct. They've also scaled up the width of the Glidelock clasp. So that means the clasp and also the bracelet, which has a better taper than its previous version, perfectly balances the bracelet and clasp better balance the 41mm head of the piece. So regardless of whether you're a collector with a 6 to 7 inch wrist or a larger 7 to 8 inch wrist, you'll find this watch gives outstanding feel good factor and outstanding comfort level when wearing it. So I'm going to highly recommend this piece to you for your consideration. It is excellent quality and it is excellent value. This is one of the greatest Rolex watches ever made. So I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Rolex Submariner 124060. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.